Hello everybody and welcome back to Aurora Plays Neverwinter Nights 2. I am your humble bard, Tim. In the previous session, we ended up um I like the poetry. That is terrifying. Um, we ended up coming to the uh, the sunken city to have a chat with the uh, the sleeping hag coven, only to be denied entrance because we were too dangerous to the coven, and so they've chucked us in this place. I'm guessing it's the dungeon underneath the coven, so we're now going to have to try and fight our way out and. Since we've been here, there's a lovely person, I'm saying, terrifying poetry. So, let's go have a chat with them, shall we? Hello. Ah, look here, we got some new arrivals. Ah, uh, got some nice gear. Let's get them. Hey. Why do we have to attack everyone, uh, everyone that's blighted mistress sins here? Um... Yeah, we don't have many left since the last time uh, Gullish came to feed. Uh, we should be welcoming the newcomers, not murdering them. Ah, uh, yes, a warm greeting would be much better than murder. Oh, shut up. Scheme is no place for honeyed words and no place for you. Uh, <laughs> good God. <laughs> terrifying. Uh, if we were to gang up on uh, any more poor defenseless selves. I'm with you. Let's get back to the sleeper. Cowards, come back here. Ah, oh, doesn't matter. Uh, more loot for us. Let's do the deed. All right, attack. It reminds me of, um, was it Farscape? There was a character in that series, like in one episode, she was like a... <laughs> she was a bone vampire. Check out this top corner area. Oh, there's a door here. Ah. Oh. Girard, River Dweller. Stay back! Uh, we outnumber you, and there's more. More of us hiding in the shadows. Uh, look, I mean you no harm, dude. I'll tell that to the ones that you just slaughtered. Hey, look, they attacked me. They attacked you? I don't when believe. They Thank you. It's true, I was there, um, Gerard. Now the hags went crazy. I told you uh, he was cracking. Yeah, those brutes got what they deserved, you asked me. Uh, what? Well, I suppose I can accept that. I'm, I'm sorry you were attacked. Some folks here, uh, some folks that is here too long, and they get desperate and more than a little crazy. I'll do my best to answer whatever questions. Uh, I don't know much though, not much at all. Um, who's the sleeper? Uh, <laughs> stop that. <laughs> the sleeper guides us. I have followed her since uh, she first arrived. She was sent here by the mistress, like the rest. She's different. Um, and how is the sleeper different? Uh, but most are exiled here. They arrive terrified and untrusting, and without guidance, they turn crazy real fast. When the sleeper arrived, she was still vulnerable and peaceful. So we carried uh, her here to protect her, and when she began to speak, uh, of profound things and guiding us. What does she speak of? She speaks of death and of life and of lessons learned and wisdoms lost. She is cryptic and makes you search for the meaning in her words, but... <laughs> the 
There is meaning in such things. <laughs> I'm ashamed to say that when I first heard the sleeper, I thought she was babbling nonsense. But I learned, I learned that if you listen to the sleeper with an open heart... With an open heart and mind, you will learn how to survive in the scheme. She will make you different. When I arrive, when the exiles mentioned Gulashk. Shh, don't say that name. The mag hag will heal you. She and she'll come and she'll kill us all. Um... Oh! Maybe I want to. Uh, maybe I want her to show up. You said it again. Oh gods! <laughs> Did you hear it? Uh, shut up! <laughs> oh gods! Uh, I can hear her coming closer and closer. Be silent! Be silent! Now I say. Um, this crash, crash, crash! You, you kill us all! You must be silent. Exiles, help me! <laughs> oh no! Jeez. Hello, sleeper. Um, careful, the woman who sits here within the trance, she is more than she appears. She wakes, she walks the dreaming. Your voice is almost reverent. No, this woman, her presence is remarkable, it is as if her body is a vessel, a vase that holds dreams. To an extent, all creatures have such potential, but she is far more than most. Uh, it's like staring at a natural wonder, like a waterfall or a natural geyser rising from the earth. Um, you're correct that she's not all there, and I do not think I could travel into her dream alone <laughs> and survive without an anchor of some sort. Her mind, her dreams are like a whirlpool. Without someone to brace me or bracing someone else, I would be lost. I will leave her be. All right. Why would I slay her? That's ridiculous. Now, someone picked up a lever. It shall be done. I would say yes. The marrow. Bite off the bone. Suck the marrow. Have at thee. I can't even make a scratch. Okay, so what is this then? What's the lever do? Oh, it's a club. 
All right, fine. I thought it was something interesting. A glowing powder, eh? Uh, seems to shimmer with energy. I doubt the powder offends your nodes as does mine, but I'd be wary of it. How strange. I've never seen any air elementals leave guano such as this. Powder extracted from air elementals. It acts as a rather effective energy catalyst. We have no suitable container for this specimen, so let's just leave it be. Alright. Swift golem legs, okay. Hey dude. That is the largest living chunk of rock I have ever seen. <laughs> I hope you do not intend to antagonize it. I don't. That's the Ah Ismarky device. A dream. A dream. A dream. I've seen similar devices to this in the academy. They're used for harnessing the power of elementals. This device is used to bind and harness an earth elemental. It makes it rather critical for maintaining the structural stability of the building. I say we take the quickest route. Let's destroy this thing of earth and let this city sink. Fuck! Sink further into its foulness. Okay, so I could potentially... There we go. Oh! Why can't I use the item? Oh! Right, so I've actually got to stick him onto a golem, which means it's likely going to be a golem sidekick that we can have later on in the campaign. So wait, does that mean I can't actually beat... Because I, I pulled that lever out and killed the, the golem, I can't go further anymore? Bone, suck the marrow! 
Oh no, I can't go that way either. Alright, so we gotta go... Oh, this door's open now. Oh, good. Ooh. No shit. So this is the source of that wretched squawking. I'll tear out her throat and silence her for good. Just ask. There is something about her. Beneath the mask she is wearing is a face I feel I have seen many times before. But... Ah, another lucky one. Lucky to no sleep, to no dreams. My gift to you. Eternal slumber. Yes, and you might dream too. You might. Uh. Ah, uh, look, I just want to talk. Oh, where'd she go? Wait, what? Oh, she possessed... Oh, okay. There we go. Enough. This blood of mine you've spilled has loosened insanity's grip on me. For now. I do not wish to die, though it would bring an end to the punishment I've endured for my crimes. My crimes! <laughs> Uh, so what were your crimes? I violated the sisterhood, broke the sacred laws of Gurganus. I took a man as my lover, and I loved him. Oh, how I loved him. I kept this love hidden, told my sisters I was just toying with him, just toying a little longer. But I let him escape and fooled my sisters with the desiccated corpse of some other man. Huh. They remained ignorant of my terrible crime until I birthed the product of our love. Then they found my beloved and made me devour him alive in front of his son. Ugh. Even as they forced chunks of his flesh down my throat, he smiled at me, at our child. So beautiful like his father was my son, Ganeo. You. You are my mother. There we go. So, my son has returned, and he has brought violence against me. You started it. Will you murder your mother? Is this the homecoming you have sought? You abandoned me. Cast me to the wilds of Roshaman. Abandoned? Implies I had a choice in the matter, my child. I had but one choice, and that was to love your father. What does a hag such as you know of love? Baby, don't hurt oh, me. Oh, then you, I think, child. Have you not drifted from creature to creature, spirit to spirit, finding no dream that has touched you? 
You know what I speak of is true, Ganaev. Gan of Reed, spirit of Russiaman. Do not waste what short time we have together with protests and accusations. You speak as if your words are truth, but you know nothing of me, of my life. I know you have dreamed of the city beneath the waves, and your travels have circled it all your life until now. Until the time has come to destroy it. It was ordained we speak this one last time, my dear Gan. It is the one hope that has cradled me in this prison. You. You are a creature of lies, spawned from lies. And you, my beautiful child, are far more terrible to be spawned from the love of a hag. By such things are cities and nations laid to ruins. Do you wish to see the proof of my claims? Camera's a little off there. I think we should hear her out. All right. I admit I have my doubts. But if you do not, that is enough for me. My words you should hear. There are others who deserve your hatred far more. The coven who sleep here, they must be awakened and with violence. Can do. Send the coven to join your father who drifts in the rivers of the dead. Show them at last the horror that the love of a mother and a son can bring to their dreams. Voices echo through my mind, and the insanity would soon reclaim me. Take from me my eye. I will need it no longer. Use it in your travels. Use it against the coven. Now leave me. The escape you seek is ahead. I do not know how much longer I can maintain my sanity. The voices in my mind are a good company. Then hear my voice this last time, Mother. Where I walk, you shall be with me until the end days. We shall be together again. My son, my precious son, can he, does he dream of me, my son? I've gained the dream haunting ability. Dream haunting and enables you to enter the dreams of anyone who is sleeping. If you have companions in your party who also have the ability to haunt dreams, they will join you in the dreamscape. Ah, okay. So, can we go back to... Okay, so we're going to try and get back to the entrance, I'm guessing. That way we can enter the the dreams of the lady at the beginning, the sleeper. Uh, or can we? Or have I fucked up because I did the, um... Ah, that sucks. Because I killed the, um... Because I killed the golem and caused the collapse, I didn't do it in the right order. So that's what stopped it. Ah, shit. Alright, um... Let me... Alright, 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 let's try this. Um... One hour later. All right, so I went back through and I actually completely replayed everything and there's no way, at least that I can tell, to get back to 
the like there's no way to do it in any other order like you've got this little section here like a little gap you can't even jump through that whole thing and then I've, i was searched all over this area here and there's no way to get like through to this side so it looks like the only way to get in is literally to Oh. It's one thing I didn't try. God damn it. Oh, screw it. But yeah, so... Fuck! I'll be right back. One eternity later. All right, so I managed to get myself around to a different location here on the map. This little area here, there's a door, and this is another device. Now, I've got two rods here. Uh, I believe this device is used to harness an air elemental. In fact, the air elemental we encountered nearby was probably once bound to this machine. The globe on the top needs to be replenished if this device is to work again. I'd imagine fresh blood, catalyzed by the essence of an air elemental, would generate the magical resonance needed. We've stepped over several fresh corpses on our way here. Perhaps they could supply the blood we need. If the device appears to be missing, its lever will need that too. With all the pieces together, the air elemental bound to this device should be drawn back to it. All right, so we've got to find ourselves... Okay, so I'll take the empty globe. So there's air elementals, or the same air elemental, I think, the one that keeps on attacking us. Um, whenever we kill it, it keeps on uh, leaving little goo trails behind. So I think... Here is like this here, glowing powder. Uh, da, 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 strange, continue. Ah, okay, so we've got to find a corpse. Was, isn't there a corpse down here? Or it might have been in the other room. I believe it was just around the corner here, there was a fresh corpse. Oh, this corpse might be worth... Oh, there it is again. So this place is kind of tricky to navigate, because there's like areas like this that go down and up. Now... There's an area that was just around the corner where... Um, the stairs go up, but if you click on the stairs, you don't actually go up them. You actually have to use the WASD controls. Uh, there we go. Bring the globes close to the body. Touch the globe. Excellent. Now it contains these weird things. Yeah, so as I was saying, um, like this bit here, when you go to it, it doesn't let you go through the door, but if you push forward, that's how you get through it, which is a real pain if you're trying to use the if you're just using the mouse controls, it won't actually function. Which was sort of throwing me off. So there's like little areas like that which are, make it really disorienting to uh, to navigate. Alright, so now we just head back to where we came. Yeah, the ones that go down are problems. The ones that go up that cause issues. There we go. Bite off the bone, suck the marrow. Bite off the bone, suck the marrow. Uh, okay. Now we gotta go install the globe into the device. And I don't think we can get around. 
Yeah, so maybe the air elemental will let us transport around better. Uh, continue. Insert the globe. And pull the lever, crunk. Vice powers on. Good work. I was about to fall into hibernation just watching you toy with the contraption. Ah, it's satisfaction seeing device come to life after so long. I'd forgotten what makes this place bind spirits to do their bidding. I suppose I should uh, waste no pity on this creature of air. In all these years, it made no effort to escape. Can I talk to it? Okay. Oh. Please come back, my son, my son. Kill them all, one by one by one. All right. So that's the air elemental taken care of then. Not that it was that big of a problem. I was just killing it every time it showed up. I thought it was actually different earth element, uh, wind elementals. I didn't realize it was the same one. Ah, we're on the other side of the area that I couldn't get to beforehand. All to get a plus three. A charming sling. How charming is this sling, I wonder? No, it gives you a bonus to charisma. It's very charming. But I don't think it's going to stack with my current... No, it doesn't. I'm just... I'm far too charming as it is already. It just can't make me any more charming. Yeah, so we can't... So she disappears through this way here. We can't go that way. Can we go this way? This was the... No, alright. Um... Yep, yeah, alright. Let's just see if we can't work our way out of here from here then. Uh, another up and down stair. Ah, uh, okay, right. That's why we can't go around. Hmm. Oh well. Oh. Oh, the mistress. Sorry. We're back, bitch. Level up. Thank you for the level up. Ah. Oh, shit. The mind flare in here. Of course. Not of course. What the fuck are you talking about, of course? Alright, so, explain this shit to me. Why the fuck is there a Mind Flayer in here that I get to have a chat with? Because this is both awesome and disturbing. Ah, oh, some red wizard robes. Oh, there's a human bard in here. Alright. Excuse me, Mind Flayer. One second here, hang on. All right, so here's the slumbering coven. Just 
loot everything here first before we kick off. Nine hags that make up the slumbering coven hover in mid-air protected by energy barriers. The energy fields prevent us from slaying these crones as they sleep, but from here we can invade their collective dream and perhaps destroy them from within. Um, Alright, I can dream haunt the bitches. First, it seems easy entering the coven's dream skake. S skake? The dream skake. Uh, like diving into warm water, but then you are grabbed by an unseen force, shaken violently, blah, 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 and thrown into blackness. I don't like being shaken violently, it's very unpleasant. Alright. How you doing, all? How are you, Aurora? Oh, you missed the final scene. Uh, what are you talking about? Don't you remember? We composed the plane for you, like you ask. It's fine work, it's an old story. Uh, the Betrayer's Crusade. There's something deeper in her request, an undercurrent. We should probably follow its pull. I see where, and see where this play leads. Um, go ahead up on stage. We've reserved the betrayer's part for you. Oh, I'm the betrayer. Great. Um, better remind me the lines, please. Uh, no time at all. Uh, I'll set the stage and you can make up your lines. Oh, great. Thank you. The crusaders failed. The betrayer's army is crushed and he must give his final commandments to his lieutenants. The Dark God Merkel ooh, is uh, close at your heels. Uh, you must make these orders count. They should be your legacy. All right. Oh, I'm no actor. <laughs> Bullshit. I'm the greatest actor in the world. All right. I'll play along. Maybe this dream will start to make sense. Ah. You have a dream worker's heart. You swim with the currents, not fight them. Not a dream, a play. Or perhaps there's little difference. No matter, get up on stage, hurry. The audience is getting restless. All right, all right, all right, all right. Vesper, what's going on, dude? I greet you. Up on stage, quickly. Everyone's waiting for your entrance. Enter Aurora, stage center. I am Zobe, the white wings and golden brown, born in the radiance of Celestia. For mercy and for justice, I swore to bring down the wall. I am Ramag, the old, the dead. Thrice I have glimpsed godhood, and thrice that prize has been snatched from me. Thrice I glimpsed godhood. So I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, for the knowledge I was promised, I swore to bring down the wall. I am Siori. Tevru, uh, the vast and glorious, who swore, uh... Who saw the deserts? Des oh, jeez! <laughs> I am Sieru, the vast and glorious, who soared the desert skies, blue upon blue, for the debt I owe to the U betrayer. I swore to bring down the wall. Oh. Boo! Hiss! <laughs> the God of the Dead draws near, and our battle is lost. What did you have? Us? Uh, what would you have of your generals? Um. What's my line? Um, stand and fight. The crusade may have failed, but we won't be taken alive. What? That's not in the script. Right, it isn't how it goes at all. Uh... Okay, then. Forget my last order. We flee and finish the battle another day. Wrong again. I told you. Oh, God damn it. Uh, I want my body back. The actor doesn't even know the part. Something's wrong with this dream. It's not coming from you. But, hmm, perhaps we should skip to the final scene where the betrayer is captured, tortured, and punished. <laughs> he won't uh, need to know any lines for that scene properly. Yes, he'll only need to know how to scream. No! Back off! Well, that certainly sucked. Everyone's a bloody critic. But we will turn, and we will wait for him as we promised. We watch for the opening of the gates. 
Look for us on the day the betrayer returns. We will storm the city of judgment at his side, and our oaths will be fulfilled at last. Well, the chim was powerful, and there was much truth in it, I think. The portal will lead us onward. All right, then. I will enter the portal. Oh. Hello, ladies. It's a reflection of the Mind Flayer who's trapped here. I'll travel to the Mind Flayer's prison. Ah, interesting. Did it send you to rescue me, or are you with the Githyanki? Uh, no, I'm here to rescue you. You lead, I follow, after I see it is safe. Oh, I can pass through the walls, it can't. Oh, jeez. Alright. Oh. Alright. <laughs> that was weird. It couldn't possibly have been that easy, could it? Alright, I guess it was that simple. That's just bizarre. Kind of feels like they forgot to program enemies. Oh, I guess I had to pick the human or the mind flayer. All right. Is that telling where this portal will lead to? Ooh. Araman. Is this build portal before us? It is not something native to our world, or even the realm of dreams. It began here. I stood at the betrayer's side, at my brother's side. They were gathered around us, celestials, dragons, mortals, both alive and dead. Did the room expand to hold such a host, or is my memory too small? You're Araman, a red wizard of Thay. You're the new one... You're the one who uh, usurped Sophia's academy. Oh, okay, it's not that person then. I was thinking it was the, the main character from uh, Baldur's Gate. I was not always a red wizard. The last time I laid eyes on that door, I was nothing but a younger brother, the shadow of a better and wiser man. We stand before the Betrayer's Gate, a door that should not be. Rest your eyes upon its edges and its grooves. Watch them carefully. You can sense the wrongness. Death and life flow together in that simple slab of rock. Pass through it, and you will see the place of final judgment. I met three generals who said they would await the opening of the gate. This is the gate they meant? Yes. My brother's generals await his return as he commanded them. They wait in vain. My brother cannot return. He is... gone. And beyond the gate lies the Fugue Plain, the City of Judgment. Yes, the Grey City and its walls screaming souls. Passage to that forlorn realm is granted only by death. But this gate provides another way, a forbidden way. A way that my brother opened with his silver blade. I swear to you, if I could take it back, if I could make him see. Sophia? No. Wait, it only seems to be her. But so close. So... You? Make him see? Aramon, you flitting shadow. You are nothing but a leaf born by a great storm. So who are you? You're not Sophia. Aramon, why do you hunt me? You would destroy everything your brother strove for, render his sacrifice meaningless. Not to destroy, to set things right. 
How could I choose my brother over my god? Yes, I was a feeble, flitting thing when I passed through that door. I was born by my brother's storm, but I learned from his folly. He set mortal love above the gods, so he paid the price. And we paid with him, you and I. Be cautious. I think choosing one over the other will lead to bloodshed in this dream. So you're both suffering, but the fault is not your own. Would the betrayer have wanted this strife between you? No, he wouldn't. What my brother desired, how can that matter? My brother wanted to uproot the planes and tear down the gods from on high. Suffering cannot be avoided. It can be minimized, yes, but the universe cannot be torn asunder for the sake of one soul. Hmm... There's no greater ideal than love. Let the gods fume and rant. Mortals must follow their hearts, no matter the consequences. Love may care for itself in its own way, ideal or not. But anything that makes pretender gods fume and rant warms my heart. <laughs> Spoken like the betrayer himself. Always selfish. Always believing that his dreams were grander. That his loves were stronger and not to be denied. And she is selfish too. She sows suffering in love's name. Let the heavens fall and roast in the pits of hell. If love was served by such as this, she would care not. Ooh. Oh, okay. And love overcomes as it always must. I thought he <laughs> we were there to kill him, but he just disappeared. Uh, dreamscape over a slumbering queen. All right. Thank you. And that is all, and the exit of the coven is revealed again. But the meaning of this dream eludes me. All right. So maybe they took the silver blade of Gith in order to reopen that's what because i i reforged the silver sword of gith in the previous game so because of that yeah so because of that they need they needed me and so they they re they recovered my my body took the silver sword of gith from me and now they're going to try and uh re-release this betrayer Ah, okay, here we go. Human bard. I will travel to the bard's prison. Hey, Durla. Hello. Ah, oh, newcomer. Welcome, sir. Come to play hell. Uh, play hells, have you? Uh, hells? Yes, sir. Hells, an entire original game of my own creation, I'm proud to say. All right, then let's play hells. Excellent. I'll explain the rules listen closely because I will not ever repeat myself. Uh, tell me the rules. This game is a deduction, sir, inspired by uh, the nine hells. Betor, Avernus, Dis... Uh, I probably better write this down. A few moments later. Alright. I think basically the idea there was not even trying to work that one. So I'm not even sure that it was possible to win that one. I mean, it probably was, but... So, anyway. He's now walked away, which means that... Yes. We wanted him out of the game, so... It kind of worked out... The right way anyway. Yes. Ah. 
Uh, the air is thick with screams. They rise like a symphony under the dead gray sky. Each note, a shriek of rage, a plea for mercy, or a moan of despair. Is this a dream? It seems. Aurora Boreale. It's Bishop. The sound of your name is hoarse and distant. It cuts through the din of voices coming from a twisted but familiar form that lies embedded in the wall just ahead. Oh, it's the wall. The man you knew as Bishop lies encased in a quivering greenish mold. His limbs are twisted at odd angles, as if they are broken. His face, frozen in a grimace of pain, barely clears the surface of the wall, like the face of a drowning man gasping for air. His eyes meet yours, and you realize that all the color has drained from his hair and his flesh. One of his eyes is completely white and bulging. Yeah. This can't be right. You turned against Garius and fled. You survived. Funny. I remember things differently. Halfway out of the temple, everything shakes, and a hundred tons of rock fall on my head. Right. The last thing I recall seeing were bits of my own skull. Who is this one? He speaks as if he knows you. Hmm. Have you assembled a new circus of capering beasts? Does the pretty hag spawn sing for his supper? Or does he dance as well? Uh, Gan is a trusted friend. Um, more so than you ever were, I guess. And I dance and sing quite well, I would add. <laughs> more trusted than the man who opened the gates of your keep to a horde of undead? You should treasure that compliment, Hagspawn. It is clearly a heartfelt. At once, the wall shudders, convulses. The twisted figures trapped within cry out as one as the entire wall shifts. Limbs shudder. Bones crack, and a greenish mold expands, covering faces, eyes, and mouths. The smirk leaves Bishop's face, replaced for one naked moment by wide-eyed fear. Can you hear it? In the screams. Underneath the screams. The reason you're here. They are mine. Uh... So they know why I'm here, the other Doom Souls? They've been here longer. Decades. Centuries. The wall's hunger takes some more quickly than others. And some hold on. Pointlessly. Staving off oblivion. Battling for every moment. <laughs> They're infected with hope. Waiting for the crusade to return. Which, uh, I hear something. This place is familiar somehow. Bishop's one good eye loses focus. It seems to look through you, beyond you. The screams and cries of the other souls become quieter, as if they are suddenly listening to his words. It ended here. This wall. It hungers. It drains everything away. Your voice is different. Are you still Bishop or someone else? For a moment, Bishop's eye seems to clear. He looks at you, takes in your face, as if for the first time. You, I saw you, here. I saw you in the wall. I've never been in this wall before. Yes, you're right. It was someone else. You're a mask. Nothing but a mask. The wall shudders again, and you hear a sickening crack as Bishop is drawn further back into the wall. Green mold rushes in to cover his face and bursts forth from his mouth in a noxious purple. They see you, the god of the dead. They're coming. Again, the god of the dead. There is some game being played here with ancient rules. They're coming. Whoa. It's a horny devil.
It may be my instinct speaking falsely, but I think it may benefit us to examine the section of wall where your friend used to be. <laughs> Just a pit for Okay. That took... 20 minutes of just swinging my <laughs> we burnt through every single one of our spells every single one of our abilities yes. everything look at yes. look at gan's inventory he has no fucking arrows left we put everything into this bitch in order to kill him my god that was a ridiculous fight and it wasn't just the fact that it because it was it was just stupid because he wasn't doing any damage to us and we weren't doing any damage to him. We were just literally just like eh, eh. <laughs> and finally got him out. Fucking hell. Get in line. Follow me. Alright. Hello, Bishop. The noxious green mold has closed over Bishop's face and head. One of his hands still protrudes from the wall, contorted around an object that lies half buried in the mold. I will try to Right, you dig into the mold around Bishop's hand. The surface is soft, feathery, like moss, but underneath it becomes firm, with hidden barbed edges capable of tearing flesh or holding it fast. At last, the object comes free. Ah. It is a piece of a mask, pale and maggot gray. It drinks in the light as if hungering, but reflects none. Another mask fragment. These are important indeed, and are taking on a greater significance. All right. Oh, now we got the fucking portal. God damn it. Actually, you know what? While I'm... Actually, I'm going to stay here for a second. Can I rest here? Oh, good. Ah. Change has come over the Chamber of Dreamers. The hideous forms of the Coven are solid now, and whispers fill the room. Hundreds of whispers, resolving themselves slowly into a single voice, which prickles like a swarm of ants inside your skull. Speak. You are the slumbering Coven, the ones who have slept beneath Rashomon. Yes. The slayers of my father. The warden of my mother, and the ones who punished her never to sleep, never to dream. Yes. Why? She did not attack you. She did not... She broke our law, Spawn. The one you travel with, he is the product of such broken laws as are you. Transgressions must be punished, or they are repeated. I agree. And that is why we are here to punish you. No, not unless you want this place to unravel around you, to see all dreams, all the chambers of this city flooded and gone. To do so would kill you as well, and much farther do we think you have to travel. Uh... Well, go on, Gan, you have something else on your mind. My father, what did you do to him? Dead and gone by our law. As her mother gave in to her appetites, so was she forced to devour her own mate. In the manner of all hands, piece by piece, leaving just enough alive to scream. By your law, you say? Then all I wish is that the same justice be brought upon you, and that you feel its self same mercy. You have questions, Spirit Eater? Ask them. Uh, yeah. You're the hags, but the coven usually composed of three, not nine. Uh, how have you built this dreamscape? Scape. By weaving together the strands of our dreams. The longer we sleep, the stronger our web. And we take dreams from other minds, adding them to our own. From the dreams of mortals, we salvage much. Visions and hopes and memories. We take these things and gather them here, 
before mortal minds can forget them. Uh, so you walk unbidden through people's minds? Yes. Mortals are stupid, forgetful things. We walk in their dreams, and we take what they will only lose. Hmm. So why did you show me those dreams? What did they mean? We showed you nothing. You showed us and we drank deep. Such was the price of your passage and of the words we speak to you now. So they came from my mind. From its deepest places, yes. Where dreams mingle with hidden and forgotten things. So your servant said that your dreams were disturbed uh, and that I was the cause. Is this true? Yes. You are a tempest of dreams. A whirling storm, devouring dreams and dreamers alike. They swirl around you like leaves, tearing, shifting, blending one into another. It is maddening. We saw you reach out to devour the bear god and sensed in your hunger the death of all dreams. But such as you walks the land. All that we try to preserve is lost. Hmm. So two women came before you not long ago. You gave them advice, something to do with me? Yes, the white twin and the red. The white twin was Lyanna. The red twin was Nephris. So Nephris is the mother of Sophia. The pretty one. Her dreams are scattered. Nauseating to look upon. She knows not what she is. But yes, the one she calls mother beseeched our advice and offered her dreams for trade. Uh, so what do they want from me? Nothing from you. They sought to end your affliction. To spare you from your suffering. Oh, that's nice. The whispers seem to draw back from your mind, separating themselves into many different voices. For a few moments, they echo back and forth across the chamber, as if conspiring amongst themselves. Then, abruptly, they resolve again into one. We are creatures of dreams, not words. Telling is cumbersome. We will show you what you wish to know. All right, sounds good. Show me. Out of thin air step two women, one garbed in white, the other in red. You realize at once that you are seeing a dream, a memory, something that occurred here in the past. See us, hags of the coven, and know us for what we are. We beseech your wisdom and bear gifts of dreams to trade. Dreams of a sort even you have never seen. We have heard tales of you in the dreams of the living and reflected in the dying minds of those who perished in our safety. Your dreams are a treasure, unique in our hoard, like worlds seen through different facets of the same ancient stone. Your question resounds across the infinity of your dreams, but in this place, you must ask it aloud. Speak. We... we would know how to end the affliction. The curse that the Rashemi call the Spirit Eater. We have searched so long, Sisters of the Coven. We... Tell us how to end the hunger. How can the Eater of Souls be granted peace? Even in the dream, the whispering of the hag seems to pause, growing quiet for a long moment as if in reverence or uncertainty, then... That affliction is a punishment, meted out by one who once reigned as God of the Dead. He alone knows its beginnings, and he alone might bring about its end. You speak of Merkel, but, but he is dead. We seek an answer, not a riddle. That God of the Dead has passed beyond thought or dream. He has been slain and his throne usurped. His knowledge is lost. Not lost. 
Merkel is a corpse, but his thoughts and dreams remain. Marooned now inside the rotting hulk of his mind. He dreams endlessly of old enemies come to grief and ancient slights avenged. As long as he is remembered and feared by mortals, even if they are pitiful and few, his dreaming will persist and his mind shall endure. Then we must speak to a dead god? Hmm. It can be done. That is all we would know, Sisters of the Coven. Thank you. Then this curse is the result of one of your gods? How many gods of the dead do you people have? Your people? The gods of the dead watch you, gang of dreams. All their laws, all their punishments will fall on you as well. And if you do not believe in them, then one of their harshest laws shall be inflicted upon you. To lie within the wall of the faithless until you dissolve as a fading dream. So keep your defiance if you must. But it will not last when death comes for you, dream thing. Hmm. Well, did they, did they succeed? Did they speak to the dead god? That is a question we cannot answer. The Red Twin has returned to Fae to her academy. A horror of endless voids and fractured souls. We are blind to all that passes here. The White Twin, Liana, kept portals in her secret room in the shadow of her theater. One of them is open only to those who know where it leads. Hmm. Take passage from her keeper of doors, and he will open the way. Beyond that portal lies the academy, and your answers. But we care not what you do, spirit eater. We have spoken enough. You have troubled our dream too long. Uh... All right. You told me what I needed to know. I say we bring their dreaming to an end. Show them the pain of the waking world. Uh, agree. I should not suffer these things to live. If you end our dream, all that it contains is lost. Imagine the dreams of a thousand, thousand souls. The knowledge of wizards and kings, centuries dead. The hopes and loves of men and women and beasts, all contained within our unending dream. Such a trove as has never been assembled, here or anywhere across the plains. This you would destroy for your own selfish whim? Not really, no. If I have to sacrifice all that to make sure you bitches can't uh, inflict any more pain, then I will. So be it. My spirits are ready to fight with us, to their second deaths if need be. You have not the power nor the will, stupid, arrogant thing. How many hundreds have tried to usurp our place, but we took their power and absorbed their dreams. This one does not stand alone, but with me. I am no novice to the unraveling of the dreams and ambitions of others. Together, you will not find us easy prey. Well, together with Gan, concentrate your will upon the dream and attempt to take control. Gan begins to mumble a series of words. You do not understand what they mean, if indeed they mean anything at all. But you close your eyes and concentrate on them, focusing your mind and allowing Gan to guide you. Together you reach out, probing, drifting with the ebb and flow of the dream. The dreamscape is like a vast tapestry upon which the hags crawl, greedily snatching up dream fragments from weaker mortals and sewing them into their vast, sprawling web. Gan guides you to the scenes, the weakest, most ancient connections that bind the dream together. And together, you tear them asunder, watching as the tapestry splits apart. And the hags shriek in agony as their dream dissolves into a million whirling threads. Yeah, fuck those guys. Whoa! Let me go. God damn it! 
Yeah, but why would you just go to sleep? Ah. Talk about a wake up call. <laughs> All right. Yes. So how do we get out of here? Is the next question. Oh, there's a door. Oh, a trapped door. <laughs> oh, traps in this door. Ah. Ah. Out of the fucking doorway, you motherfuckers. Oh, God damn it. the boy <laughs> forgot that was a thing all right we're out of here I get my fifty thousand back off this bastard. Hey. All right. Ah, there's Fetlamy. To return, I knew you would. Oh, you survived, and you destroyed the Earth Elemental. A pity you did not wish to accept my business arrangement. Though you uh, inadvertently had benefited me, you rejected my proposal, so I am not required to pay for your services. Now I must return to my home plane to complete preparations for a new arrival. Oh, we may meet again, but I doubt it. Ah, you bitch. Can I attack him? And I pick his pocket instead. Ooh. I got 20 GP. Let's try it again. Ah, uh, he left. All right. Well, on that note, that is where we are going to leave. Oh, well, on that note, that is where we're going to leave today's session. So, the plot thickens. They weren't trying to force this curse upon me. They were trying to cure me of it. I think they just sort of stuck me with it so that um, someone that wasn't pure evil had to deal with it. But uh, anyway... We'll see how this all uh, plans out in the next session. I think I'm heading back to... We're heading back to the town. Uh, back to... Yes, we're heading back to um, Malsantia. And then we are heading to uh, the theater. Into the Shadow Realm. And from the Shadow Realm uh, to the... Uh, Thay Tower of the Red Wizard. So we'll get to that in the next session. But for now, thank you all very much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. I have been your humble bard, Tim, and be sure to come back for the next session of Aurora Plays Devil Winter Nights 2. Bye! <laughs>